Y'all planning for this? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Perfect RIA Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Jarvis, and in today's episode, today's edition of What Works Wednesday, we have longtime, perhaps one of our first Invictus members, Joe Curry, calling us in from Canada to talk about the amazing changes that he's made in his practice the last few years. Joe, how are you today? I'm great, Matt, and I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here today. That's fun to have you. Well, Joe, give us just a little bit of background on you and your practice, your niche, your specialty, all those things, and then we'll jump into some of the cool things you've been doing. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So uh, I've been in the business as an advisor for about 10 years, like a lot of people. And I started on the insurance sales side, you know, as a way to actually make some money when I know assets. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, over time, I really liked more of the financial planning side of things, got my CFP and Found another advisor who was doing some some retirement planning, but uh, among insurance and, and some other like group or employee benefits types of sales. But there was a, a really good base there. He had some good clients, and uh, he was he was a good guy too, who I knew uh, took good care of his clients. So I was started with my dad actually in his business, but this was a good fit for me because this guy was looking to for a succession plan, and I was kind of a good fit for that. So worked with him for a few years, um, bought at the business in in 2019. And basically for the kind of the year, year and a half following that, I implemented a lot of things that I learned from you guys and TPR. So, uh, you know, really got clear on who we served. Uh, I sold a, a piece of the business to my dad, actually, who does employee benefits. So, which is a good fit because he specializes in that area. He doesn't do anything else. And then it allowed me to specialize where I do, which is the retirement planning. So, you know, I've I really modeled a lot of my practice after what I've learned from you and, and the same types of clients that you work with, Matt. So, you know, we work with uh, people who are getting really close to retirement or already retired. And we've implemented a lot of processes. Again, a lot of it's stuff we got from you that's uh, allowed us to be, you know, really efficient. And I feel like add a lot more value in that space than what most advisors are because they're so focused on trying to do everything for everyone, which is, again, is where I started. But, you know, I've seen what I've been able to do from a value standpoint for clients and the feedback I've got from clients on, on some of the changes we made has been really great. So, so now, you know, our practice is about a, from a client household uh, number is uh, about a third of what it was a couple of years ago. But again, it's clients that we can add really good value to. And also, you know, clients that allow us to, to pay the bills and, and remain profitable. So we're going to be here for a long time to continue looking after those clients. So that's kind of where I am today. Well, I appreciate that overview. Joe, one of the fun things that, that I've enjoyed working with you is, is one, just being an advisor in Canada, right? The, the rules are different than the United States. The planning opportunities are different. Even just employment laws, all sorts of things are different. But I, I've always admired how you took ideas and you said, great, I'm not going to let different set of rules stop me. I'm going to figure out, like, how do I implement this? And sometimes advisors get stuck on this, right? We have advisors now all over the world, but even here inside the United States, they say, well, my compliance won't let me do this or my geography, but you've really kind of mastered like, hey, I'm going to find what works and I'm going to just adjust it until it fits me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think any any kind of a strategy or niche or whatever it is, that, I mean, I think it, it can be applied in almost all circumstances from what I've found. And I've had a lot of people, even close people tell me that, you know, not because I, you know, I've really fell in love with what you were doing when I heard you on the, the first kids uh, episode. And, you know, I had a lot of people say, yeah, but you know what? He's in, he's in Seattle. That's a big city. And yeah. uh, in the States, there's way more money there than Canada and all these different kind of things that, you know, it gives you some head trash, but you know, I just decided, and I think you had said it when you were doing some coaching uh, earlier on, if you're going to wear like, you know, a pink suit, purple tie, whatever it is, you just yeah. kind of do what the people are doing who you want to have a practice like. Right. So I've just really run with these ideas and kind of just had faith that if I did what, you know, you guys and the people I've seen who are doing, you having great success. If I just did that, then, you know, the, the success will follow. And so, so far it's been working. I don't think there's anything I've really done that has been, I looked at it and said, you know what, this was just, you know, a stupid idea. I shouldn't have done that. Like it really just comes down to having the faith to do it. Right. It's never, it's never complicated, but it's just not, it's not easy because it's more than just deciding to do it. It's, it's uh, getting over that, that fear, that head trash and, and just taking the action. So, you know, I've done through extreme accountability has been huge on a few items, but I've also yeah. done, you know, a lot of things that I see other people getting extreme accountability to do without that extreme accountability. Because again, I just have faith that it'll work if I, if I do it and kind of get a little uncomfortable today to be more comfortable later on. 
And Joe, for the people who, who don't know you, I mean, you made a lot of really intense and intentional changes to your practice, right? You said back in 2019, but you had some in, in team members that weren't a right fit. You graduated a lot of clients that weren't a, a good fit. You streamlined your offering so you could be more narrowed down on your niche. You started doing surge meetings. I, I got to confess, even having watched it, you were the one who had to do the hard work. Watching it, I was scared for a minute. I'm like, wow, Joe's <laughs> changing everything. And this is getting kind of rocky, but your practice now is is phenomenal. I mean, it was great before, but the the value you're able to deliver to clients now is, I think, unmatched. Yeah, it's good. And uh, and you mentioned surge. I mean, that was definitely one of the the first things I was able to implement that allowed me to have the time to plan out and, and execute a lot of these other things I've done. And I think that the, the great thing about surge is not just that it frees up a lot of time, but it also allows me to be better for clients and in, in client meetings because. I'm not trying to jump between tasks in between meetings and, and kind of lose a focus. Uh, and because so many of our clients are very similar, you know, I'm, I really have that, that heartbeat of the meetings and I'm really into them. The clients are getting the best me, the best version of me while we're doing those, those meetings. So I think it's been great for clients, but it's been transformational for my practice just because of the time that it's freed up. And, and now that I've implemented so many of those things, uh, I feel really good about where we're at. And so this year, one of my extreme accountabilities was taking more time off. So, you know, I've already had, 40 days off this year. Uh, so we're not quite halfway okay. through the year. And I honestly, I feel like I've got more done in the first six months of this year than I've got done in any six month period ever before this. And the big thing is, it's really forced me to get intentional. And so, you know, I mapped it. One of the things I did at the end of last year and was talking a little bit with you and Micah on it was figuring out my ideal weeks. So I have two ideal weeks. So one is search, one is non search. Okay. And so I know like Mondays we do team meetings. I have a little bit of time for uh, phone calls for clients. Like there's a, an hour or two open there if someone does need to get a hold of me. And I'm just kind of cleaning some things up. And, and if I'm going to read anything, it's also going to be on Monday. So it's kind of a, a bit of a catch all day. And then Tuesday is just like client or sorry, yeah, business projects, whatever yeah. project I'm working on. And it might also, if I have some financial plans, I might do them on that day. And then Wednesday is, is the day that I'm open for, you know, other client calls. So I only have two days a month for, for meetings outside Surge, but I do keep a good block of time on Wednesdays if clients, you know, whatever comes up for clients, take care of that kind of stuff. And I'll also do client work, any kind of follow-up work, that kind of stuff. And then Thursdays is marketing. So I record podcast episodes and anything else I'm doing with marketing. And Lindsay and my team now, she's our client care coordinator, but she's getting more involved in helping in some of the marketing stuff. So Thursday is now her day where I allow her to just turn off the phone and Beth will take care of the phone. And she just is now helping me work on some of these marketing projects. And then Fridays I'm out of the office. So, and that's been, yeah, uh, that's been really great because cool. I just, I know what I'm doing before I get here. No, I, I love that. You know, Mike and I have talked all the time about the importance of surge meetings. Oh, excuse me. We never talked a lot about what to do on the off weeks, right? The non-surge. So I love your outline. Now, does your, your team, they follow a similar strategy? All right. Like you said, your, your one team members focused on marketing on Thursdays with you. But do you find any any issues with how their surge versus non surge weeks work? No, they're pretty you know free flowing. Other than we just implemented that last week, actually, or maybe two weeks ago, the uh, the Thursdays for for Lindsay yeah. the other day because she's doing a lot more of this stuff, and I just want her to uh, just have some time to really focus on that, and she's passionate about it too, so it gives her some time to really dive in and, and make, do her best there. But other than that, you know, they're they're pretty you know pretty kind of free flowing and, and react. And, and Lindsay Love does it. a lot more of handling the clients. She looks after the clients at email. She looks after the, like the phone calls coming in and getting back to people. And then she kind of delegates from there. And also she, you know, she uses our calendar link pretty religiously for if clients want to set up a call or a meeting and that's in there for the whole year ahead of time. So she's really good at, you know, helping clients find the best time is going to fit for them, but also fits it allows me to execute on uh, my ideal work just to make sure everything's getting taken care of. And, and clients, by the way, have been really receptive. We haven't had any pushback about, oh, Joe can't talk to me like in three minutes. That's never happened ever. So, Joe, let's walk through that for just a minute. So, so a client calls in, they call in on a Tuesday, we'll just say, or, or a Friday, because we know you're out there Friday, either of those days. How does your team respond to this? So they call and say, hey, I got a question for Joe about whatever. Can you walk us through how that looks and how that calendar link incorporates? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is Calendly is just set up. So what's available is available. So, so there's some phone call times on Wednesday, Monday when I'm in the office, uh, a couple of days a month for, for meetings, and then obviously search blocks set up for meetings. So uh, if a client calls in, Lindsay will kind of get try to get an idea of what they're calling about. And sure. uh, just depending on what it is, she'll kind of ask, okay, it, how, is it okay if I have Joe give you a call back on next Wednesday? And so most clients will just say, you know, yep, and she'll let them know the times and we get them in. 
if it's something that maybe seems a bit urgent, she might ask, like, is it urgent or is it okay if I, you know, set up a call for Monday or Wednesday, depending on where we are in the week. And I mean, we've had a couple of clients, unfortunately, pass away in the last month or so. So, I mean, we've expedited things like that. I mean, we're always going to take care of clients, right? We're not leaving anybody hanging. But at the end of the day, most items that come in are not urgent, right? And I mean, Bev and, and Lindsay, the two, uh, you know, my two team members in here, they're very competent and from a client service standpoint. So they can take care of and do take care of most things clients are calling in for. So half the time it doesn't even get to a call with me anyway. Great. And then other than that, if it's like something where they do want to meet with me, again, it goes back to the, the calendar calendar and, uh, or do you, is it easier, you know, she'll just ask the client, is it easier if we just add that to the agenda for your next uh, review meeting in the fall or wherever we're at? That's so great. Well, I love those, those little things that are so empowering, right? Can, can we add that to the review meeting for or the agenda to our next review meeting, right? Half the times clients just want to know that their thing's going to be taken care of. And so that's great to empower your team to do that. Yeah. So it's, it's been good. And I mean, like everybody is a little bit of head trash around what a client's going to think, but again, we, we've had no pushback. And I think that, you know, when you're doing the value adds, you know, we have a newsletter, we do regular client events. We have, you know, clients know we're seeing them every spring, fall. So when you have that many touches, clients don't call in that much. There's not that much happening. Right. No, no. Cause they know you're ahead of things. They know you're watching. Yeah, exactly. Like when we used to do, you know, we tried to do it by birthdays, like, for the month we were seeing whatever clients and then you end up missing clients because some, some months you have more days off than other months and yeah. you're trying to scramble and you end up just kind of missing people. And we're like, uh, we'll get them the next meeting, and, which is not obviously not ideal. So w- now with surge, like nobody gets missed and they get three or four follow-ups ahead of uh, our, our surge period. So they, you know, like there's no, there's never a client going to be like, oh, you know, Joe never reached out about a review this year or this uh, this spring or fall or whatever it is. And they all know when it's coming. So since we've been doing that, you know, we get way less calls, people stopping by, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's almost non-existent other than items that need to be dealt with or things that are, you know, address changes, beneficiaries, like of course. things that the staff are going to deal with anyway. Joe, I'm just sort of curious that maybe this is a, a side tangent, right? But and we can use you before and after, or we can look at other advisors. Is part of the reason that, obviously part of the reason that not as many people are calling is because you're so intentional about it and you're saying, hey, setting expectations. But it sounds like a big part of that reason is you're being proactive and you're proactively take care of so much. Whereas advisors that are constantly getting phone calls, it might just be because clients feel like they're not being listened to. Like, hey, I better call and ask about my taxes because I haven't heard anything. But it sounds like the being proactive is half the battle, the other half being setting expectations. Yeah, I think it's uh, Carl Richards. Just, he's told the story I've heard on a few different podcasts about the client who said in a perfect world, he would never, ever do reviews with him because he wanted to know Carl was looking after everything. And then Carl ended up losing that client. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so and, you know, and he said, well, you know, Dave or whatever his name was, you know, you said you didn't want me to call you because you, you thought I was taking care of it. And he's like, yeah, but I guess it just would have been nice to know, you know, you were. So anyway, I guess the, the, my my point is that even if people want to know you're taking care of things, they still feel good knowing you're on top of it, you're proactive. And, you know, even if they don't want to come into every single meeting they're offered, they know we're still looking at things and it's not going to be more than another six months before they get uh, another invitation to a meeting. It's going to be even less time before they hear from us about, you know, value out or whatever is the next thing concerning them. So I think it's all about being proactive. I love it. Joe, I want to pivot just a little bit and talk about your podcast. We both, of course, show, share a great friend in, the, in Benjamin Brandt, who's inspired a lot of us to up our podcast game. You recently started your podcast. Tell us a little bit about that, tips that you have, anything that you've learned along this process. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it's been fun today. I mean, I just started it in December, so it's still fairly recent. We've been doing biweekly episodes. It's uh, Your Retirement Planning Simplified, and you can get it on any of the different podcasts. Um, apps. But anyway, it's uh, the whole idea. I mean, one of our core values in our business is approachability. Mm. You know, our business is not always or our industry is not the most approachable. So, you know, I'm just trying to do different educational type marketing where, I mean, it it is marketing, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm just kind of giving away all the secret sauce, really. And, you know, there's going to be some people who want to do it themselves and and they can hopefully they can take that and and run with it and, and hopefully they find it helpful. And there's going to be other people who, you know, they realize how much there is to actually know. And, you know, hopefully they call call me and have a little better conversation. But it's really just like the, the title says, your retirement planning is simplified. We're just taking different questions clients have or prospects have. And, and we're really trying to simplify them down into a language that 
anyone can understand so that again, if they're going to talk, whether it's me or it's you or some other advisor they talk to, they're not going to go into the meeting kind of embarrassed to ask the questions they need to, or maybe not even talk to an advisor because they're too embarrassed to have the conversation in the first place, which I find it amazing how many times, you know, I've had people say they've never talked to an advisor because they were embarrassed about what they didn't know. Because from our standpoint, you know, that's why we have a job. So we just think, well, of course you're going to talk to me and have, and have, you know, what they might consider silly questions. We would just expect that. That's why, you know, that's literally why we have a job, but from their standpoint, I, you know, I've, I can't believe how many times I've heard that where they're just scared to talk to an advisor because they're embarrassed about their knowledge. So, you know, I hope this makes us more approachable by giving that education and helping people, you know, get that base knowledge at least so that they have the confidence to do whatever they need to, to make their retirement a reality. So that's what we're doing there. Yeah, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. We actually had Lindsay just join the podcast in the last couple episodes, so they haven't even launched yet, but we're going to do a co-hosted podcast. So uh, kind of like you and Mike, I guess, so she'll yeah. help, you know, just guide the conversation, keep me on track. And <laughs> so we're going to run with that for a bit. But the first two, uh, they were a lot of fun. So that's what we're doing now. That's fun. Good for you. I love the intentionality about how do I basically make yourself more approachable, right? How do I help people understand that you are an educator, right? You're a, you're a teacher. Yes, you have a business to run, but but really you're a teacher. You're a helper. And it seems like the podcast really helps communicate. I mean, the, the, the logistics, the message of the podcast itself is valuable, but it's almost as if you're opening that door. Hey, listen, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to sell you something. I'm here to help you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's how we've approached it so far. And like I say, it's been fun. We still have lots of content to get out there. So and in the odd time, we'll have a guest on too. Actually, our most recent guest was Scott Armstrong. He's got a company called MindSwitch. And he really is just, you know, the other side of what we're doing. He's not talking about the finances, but he's helping people live a life of purpose once they're into retirement. So interesting. So, you know, we try to get some guests on like that and, and add some value outside of just helping people understand what to do with their money, because retirement's not just about having enough money and then sitting on it. And, and as you'd say, having a mattress full of stuff, full of money at the at the end, yeah, right? yeah. we want to make sure people are have some purpose and enjoyment in retirement and are living their best life. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you kind of pulling back the curtain. Let us see, and let our nation, right? I've seen firsthand, but let the nation see some of the changes that you've made. What, having gone through this this crazy last couple of years, all these changes you've made, what are some action items? What are some takeaways that you would give to the listeners? What are things that you wish you had known when you started down this path? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I could go on forever, but if I'm trying to simplify it, and, I, and you, you and Mike have said this a million times, but surge is a good starting point. And it doesn't have to be going to, you know, two periods a year right away. I mean, even if there's a, a day, a month where you're not seeing clients and you're working on the business. And then the, the second side of that is that's really helped, especially this last year, is getting intentional on those weeks where you aren't seeing clients. So having the ideal work, work week, knowing when you're going to work on, on the business. So that kind of quadrant two important, mm-hmm. not urgent stuff, because that's what's going to change, you know, change the business. So, you know, first it's freeing it up and then, you know, based on whatever your goals are, but getting clear, I guess, on who you're working with, because then that's going to allow you to probably, probably dial the business down to a point where you're actually freeing up more time from that standpoint and then allow you to grow because now you're actually speaking to somebody instead of everybody, but no one listening. Well, I, I love that. We could, we could do an entire episode on, on each of those. And, and I love that each of those were items that you implemented, right? You you weren't doing surge and you implemented surge and you had a lot of clients and you streamed that down to just the clients that you could deliver massive value to. Well, Joe, super grateful to have you on the podcast. For anybody that's curious to learn more about Joe, you can check out his website, Matthew and Associates. You can also check out his podcast, Your Retirement Planning Simplified. For our other listeners in Canada, but also our advisor listeners anywhere in North America or the world that have a podcast, trading guest episodes is one of the best things you can do to boost your podcast. So I'd reach out to Joe and look for opportunities where you guys can collaborate and, again, help grow everyone's audience. Joe, any parting thoughts for us? Well, I'd just like to say thanks to to you, Mike, and the whole TPR uh, Nation because listening to you guys has been transformational to me. And as much as it is about the, you know, the different tactics, so to speak, of, of implementing, it's just hearing what you guys have done has been inspirational to find a, a different way of delivering value and having work life balance, all that kind of good stuff. That if I just stayed in my own little bubble, you know, I wouldn't even know what's a possibility. So, so I just want to say thanks to you guys for that. Hey, my pleasure, Joe. It's been a real honor kind of seeing you go through this process. I look forward to uh, seeing you again at future masterminds and seeing uh, additional rounds of extreme accountability. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. Hey, until next time, happy planning. Happy planning, Matt. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know. 
This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice. That isn't our intent. Information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today, don't think twice. Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife. The perfect RIA.